Welcome back to my living room. We're going to take a look at a couple problems here just as some examples to go through. Uh, oh, that timer beeping means my dinner's ready. I'm going to have to pause you for just a minute and we'll come back in a, in a second. But what we have here <clears throat> is a problem. It says um, large doses of vitamin E uh, apparently can reduce harmful side effects of bypass surgery in heart patients. All right, so we have a study that involves 28 patients, um, and they found that 14 of those patients who took the vitamin E for two weeks before their operations had significantly better heart function after the procedure than the 14 patients who took the placebo. All right, so what they say is the vitamins apparently uh, prevent change, or sorry, prevent damage. The vitamins apparently prevent damage to heart muscle by destroying the toxic chemicals called free radicals that form when blood is cut off during surgery. All right, so there's the background information. So we're going to answer these three questions. Uh, just, so as we're writing things down and you're taking notes, um, you're, you're paying attention to what was going on here, we're going to describe the experimental units. We're going to describe the explanatory and response variables. And then how many treatments were there is what we're going to do. All right. So what we're going to do first here is I'm just going to kind of go, okay, we had, just to kind of map this out, we had 14, and we had 14. We're going to assume they are randomly assigned, all right? And then we had 14 people who got vitamin E. And we had 14, 14 who had the placebo. All right? So my experimental units are the, my experimental units, my experimental units um, they are the 14, excuse me, 28 people um, who had heart surgery, uh, or it's heart bypass, I guess we're talking about here. Heart bypass surgery. Those are my experimental units. Okay, that's these people over here, my experimental units. Um, EU, by the way, is my abbreviation, not a book abbreviation, not a common standard statistical abbreviation. That's just me. All right. While I'm answering it out of order, we can see that there <clears throat> is, uh, in terms of the treatments, there are two treatments. Two treatments. All right. And the two treatments are um, those who get, uh, got vitamin E. All right, and those who, that's a G, got the placebo. Apologize for my grammatical there, got vitamin E. Those who were administered vitamin E versus those who were administered uh, the placebo. So we've got two treatments there, and then we'll check our results, and we will compare at the end. All right, that, don't worry about that. That's just my dog growling in the background. <laughs> And there he is barking. Apparently there's someone driving on the road that he needs to bark at. Anyways, um, my variables, uh, my explanatory variable and my response variable. So what I'm looking at is, uh, as an explanatory variable, um, it's whether or not uh, my patient gets vitamin E. All right, so my explanatory In this case, it's kind of like the treatments. The explanatory variable is the vitamin E or the placebo. Okay, the response variable, what am I measuring a response to? Um, I am checking to see, what does it say? Um, heart function. My response variable is heart function. Okay, and heart function, um, it doesn't really specify what that is, but it just says heart function. So my response variable is heart function. So explanatory is whether they got the vitamin E up here, or they got the placebo. Those are my explanatory variables. And then I'm going to check to see how, what effect does that have on heart function. All right, that's my, um, let's see, how many subjects were there? I had 28 total subjects, 
um, 14 in each. Uh, and then you know, describing a method for doing this, um, if the question asked, you know, are the elements for a well-designed experiment clearly stated, um, then I'd be looking for, did they talk about randomization or random assignment? And notice that when, our do, when I'm doing this, I'm not using the same language as a survey of a simple random sample. I'm saying random assignment. There was no sampling going on. I had 28 experimental units already part of this. It's not a simple random sample. I had 28 people. I'm going to randomly assign them to two groups. All right. Simple random sample is if I have a large population, I randomly sample from it. All right. But anyways, was there random assignment? Is there replication both within my experiment, so there is, there's 14 and 14. Is the replication outside? Can I repeat this whole process again? I certainly could. And is there control? All right, control in the fact that I was part of the random assignment, all right, but the subjects were not. There is also control in terms of there being a control group, vitamin E versus a placebo. All right, so the only thing really missing from this was any kind of a description for random assignment. All right, we don't know how they were assigned to these two groups here of 14 and 14. Uh, but however they did it, they did it. Um, that would be the one element that's missing for a well-designed experiment. Okay, go back here. Let's go to the next problem. There it is. Suppose there are 500 students at your school. Describe a process that uses random digits, the random digit table, to select a simple random sample of five students. All right, so there's my background information. What I want you to do is I want you to write down those numbers um, on your notebook right now. Hit pause if you have to um, and do that before you start up again so that you can be uh, following along as we go through this. Okay, so hit pause and do that now. When I'm doing a problem like this, I want to be considering um, the words I use are label, table, sample, and then execute, or then, you know, basically then do it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to label. So I want to say, okay, I need to label um, all students. Now there's 500 students, which is a three-digit number. So I need three-digit numbers, zeros, oop, zero, zero, one through 500. So I label all students, zero, zero, one through 500. So that's what I'm going to do in a label. Table is then when I look at the table, um, I'm going to look at um, three digit numbers. Three digit numbers. All right. Notice I wrote the number three just so not to be confused with any of the threes that are up here in my table. All right. But I'm going to look at three digit numbers um, for values between 0, 0, 001 and 500. I am going to exclude values um, over 500 um, and exclude repeat values. So there I've done the label and the table. And then the sample is, okay, um, how many did I need to sample? I think this problem said I need to sample five. So after, sometimes it's called the stopping rule. All right, label, table, stamp, you know, so it's called the stopping rule. So after um, I get five numbers or five uh, I guess this would be students. After I get five students, I stop. Do you really have to say that? Uh, yeah, actually you do. All right. So then I'm going to go, oh, by the way, for people who have been asking, this program is called Art 
Rage, R-A-G-E, um, and I got the light version because it's free. All right, but it lets you do all sorts of stuff over here with all my different tools. This tool, my point roller, my watercolor brush. I like the pen just because it's easy. Anyways, so I go back up here to my table of numbers right there. And I start looking through, and every three, I'm going to make a little line down indicating a three-digit number. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going through. I'm like, all right, 967 is not in my range, so I don't use that one. Uh, 461 is, so I've got 461 is the first student I select. Circle it here if I want to. Then I've got 214, which is inside my range. So I'm going to use 214. I'm not going to use 937, 823, 718, 681, 844. Oh, here we go. There's my next one. 235. Then I've got 119. That's my next one. Got to keep going here. 621. 0, 3, 3, and now I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so then I'm done. So I've now collected my random sample of 5 students out of the 500 that are at my school. So I both described the process, so this is when it says describe a process, just this in the dark blue. If it says then sample the first five, well then that's what I did down here. And that's also what I did when I entered and did all the values up here at the top as well. Uh, that's a good enough example for right now of, of, of this process for how would you do a random sampling. We did a little bit with uh, designed experiment. Uh, that should be it. There's no actual question to do in this one um, for a problem because this was just an example. But as I was going through this, if you have a question about what we did, why we did it, if I wasn't clear about certain things, um, or anything else like that, go ahead and let me know in the reflection response. But I do want you to fill out the reflection response for what you learned um, and any questions that you might have. Uh, that's it, folks. We'll see you later.